Today we launched the final government plan for our term of office. It gives projections for the next four years for income, expenditure and capital projects. And it's going to be debated this December by the State's Assembly. It follows, in general, the strategies we laid out when we took office, but also contains plans for recovering from the pandemic, both financially and socially. It sets out how we propose to pay for everything, including the impact of COVID-19, major projects such as the hospital, and continues to make long-term changes to address a number of the legacy issues we inherited. We continue to invest in children through things like dental care, further mental health investment and teacher training. We prioritise health and wellbeing. We've worked to implement the Jersey Care model, reduce waiting lists, deliver disability strategy and improve on-island patient care. And we set out our plan for revitalising the economy, which ultimately pays for all of this through the island's first economic framework. The plan also focuses on the major challenges we are facing as a community, such as population and migration, housing, climate change and island identity. Proposals for population controls will, pre will be presented before the end of the year and we will bring forward the Carbon Neutral Roadmap, which will set out the journey to carbon neutrality. And more than 900 homes are scheduled to be built by 2023, in addition to the 800 units of housing that have been provided in the past two years. There is further investment in sport and our heritage and our culture, including work commencing shortly on the initial improvements to Fort Regent. Let's be clear, COVID has been hard and it is still with us. But as an island and as a community, we have come through this together to a good place and we remain optimistic but cautious for the forthcoming months. Mental health and youth support are just part of the pathway to our island recovering from COVID. But let us not forget that we've been innovative and swift in responding to the crisis. Our vaccination programme has been one of the most successful in Europe. We've kept schools open more consistently than the UK and many European countries. And the Spend Local card gave a much needed boost to the economy last year. Our investment in IT structure, infrastructure set the foundation for our track and trace programme, which helped keep our island safe and our borders open. COVID-19 has represented a serious demand on our resources, not only requiring substantial amounts of spending, but also redirecting officer attention and time. However, the total spending on our pandemic response and economic support have been lower than our initial estimates suggested, and we were actually able to increase our reserves last year. Furthermore, we will be able to cover the debt incurred from COVID without needing to increase taxes. And this is thanks to the decision to move all islanders to the current year basis of taxation. We are also taking a very long-term proposal to the Assembly to pay back a historic pension debt earlier than expected. Doing so will avoid the additional interest which would otherwise have to be paid by future generations and saves the island as much as £3.6 billion. This figure is obviously over a very long period, but even during the next 30 to 40 years, we could save £300 million. And this sum would be a huge windfall for the island and could help to support capital projects such as the new hospital. Put simply, the new hospital can be paid for by borrowing money now at very low rates of interest and then using the much higher returns in the reserves to repay that debt over 40 years. This method is about £1.7 billion more cost effective than other suggestions. So if we do this and also take the pre-87 debt proposals and the surplus balance on the change to current year taxation, that will leave the reserves in a very strong position and will significantly support the hospital project over and above the current plans. All of this can happen without increasing taxation, but retaining flexibility for future governments and future assemblies should unforeseen circumstances arise. Our commitment has always been to improve the services we provide, to deal with the big legacy issues we have inherited, but also to remain committed to sustainable public finances, including continued savings. As a Council of Ministers, we are committed to long-term planning 
building foundations that will benefit not only islanders living and working now, but the generations that will follow them. And whilst we have had and continue to face many hurdles on this path, I believe we have kept our promise to you. Thank you for listening.